On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1986. We're going to be taking a look at Michael Martin Murphy and the Rio Grande Band, and they're going to be performing Wildfire. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So the performance for tonight is going to be just under eight minutes in length. So it's going to be a long one. I'm going to jump in about halfway through. So as always, there's going to be a link in the description below to this performance video if you want to watch it the whole way through without me interrupting it. But I'm going to leave in uh, Michael Martin Murphy's intro as well. He just gives a little bit of background behind the song and mentions it's about a magic horse. And as you know on this channel, we are big fans of magic horses. But... Let's get everybody up on screen and see how they get on. One night I was writing with a friend of mine. We'd been writing a lot of songs. We stayed up till about three in the morning and I fell asleep on the floor. I had a dream and the dream became this song that I wrote down on a legal pad. He came in and added some chords to it. it turned out to be about a magic horse. They say she died one winter When there came a killing frost And the pony she named Wildfire Busted down and stopped In a blizzard he was lost The dark of the moon I planted But there came an early snow Then I hoot out Helen outside my window now Six nights in a row She's coming for me I know And on Both 
I'm just going to jump in here. Where did that five minutes go? I thought it was going to be about two minutes into the performance, but we almost made it all the way to the end. And that is the thing about this performance and this song is that there's so much in there. And I'm going to point out as much as I can, but again, I could be here for years because we've got the piano intro, which is just on a totally different level. We've got David Hoffner here on keys and when the intro stops or at least leads into the song, you get that applause from the crowd and that is as much applause for the intro than the whole song coming in because it was so impressive from a technical standpoint. Just while I'm talking about the piano, a lot of people will be used to the radio edit of this song, which cuts down the intro and the outro, obviously to make it more suitable for radio airplay, but it won't surprise you at all to learn that this is based on a piece by Alexander Skriabin, the Russian composer and pianist, and I love the way that we start out, of course, classical because of the piece that it is based on, but then we blend in to the song and Michael's composition and we get this mix of genres and that's very much Michael in a nutshell with his background known for his cowboy roots and country music and pop music he's starting out in rock music as well so many different mixes throughout his career bluegrass as well more recently but having this just intro that is so unique so well played as well here and the way that it just lulls you in and you are really captivated just by the intro but then when the whole track kicks in we're then into the vocal and Michael's voice is just silky smooth it's exactly like you hear on the original just the control the vibrato the tone and just hitting these notes right between the eyes but having control of it the whole time just to give you guys a visual representation of the notes being hit here by Michael you can see the piano on screen and we're around C sharp 3 and E3 in the first verse he does start to push his vocal in that second verse and go an octave above hitting the F sharp 4 not that you're going to notice this because he's got just fantastic tonal consistency it never sounds like he's straining for any of the notes so he's covering well over an octave here, an octave and a half pretty much, because he does get up to an A sharp four. And when we're looking at that, that's the top end of the male tenor range. So this is the note, the A sharp four. He does flip up into falsetto four, that one note, but he is hitting all of the other notes below that in his chest voice. When he's leaning into that sound, like I said, the F sharp four that he's hitting, He's hitting that in chest voice. So all of these notes here, and that goes into the G and into the A. And you can see that he's starting that first verse in the baritone range, and he ends up, if I just drag the mouse across the range that we've got going on in this song, you can see just a massive amount of notes that Michael has here at his disposal, but he just has fantastic control, applies that vibrato to it as well, has great pitch the whole way through he's not missing notes here and this is the thing about great vocalists that it sounds relaxed when they're singing regardless of range and that is certainly the case in this performance from michael not only here live but on the record as well just in case you've got your guitars out i'll just show you the chords that you need to play along with this we're in standard tuning we're in e <laughs> And pretty much we've got the change from the E over to the A sus2. I think sounds quite nice in there. 
We have got more than one guitar going on here and we've got Michael playing rhythm as well. So it's gonna be a combination of sounds, but we've got this E. A sus two. Kinda of like that. And you can see the way that when I'm applying the rhythm there, I'll slow it down, I'm going. And I'm making a definite effort to hit that low E string and the root note of the chord within the strumming pattern. So I'm going. Kind of like that. I'll make it a little bit more obvious. Like that, A. Just to get it to pop out there and get it to sit in with the feel and the groove of this performance. Just to throw in there that it sounds like in the background we have a change to the major seventh on the E and when we get over to the A we change to the sus4. So in terms of throwing that together if you get into your major seventh shape but then place on your little finger then take off your little finger if you want to make that change just following the backing. So we have this like that. And then if you want to do the same with the A sus2, you can place in that little finger or play it with your first and second finger, place it in with your little finger or your third finger, depending on your hand size, whatever you find most comfortable. It's a little bit more of an advanced version, I guess, but it's just a case of getting your hand into that position for the E, but having the major seventh position already in there. A sus two. Then adding in that sus four. When we get into the chorus, you'll see Michael jumps up to an A major seventh shape, and he does play this as a bar chord, so it means that he's getting up to that shape there. And you can play this with the first finger all the way across if you want to, whatever you find most comfortable. But once we've played that, we then go down to the G sharp minor, down to the F sharp minor, and then back up again. Kind of like that. So those are the chords for the chorus. There might be a part in there where we make a transition over to a B, which is the only other chord that you'll need. And that's gonna be from our A major seven. G sharp minor, F sharp minor. Kind of like that, back into the E, back into our verse. So that was the B there. I was just playing that second fret position. And once you've got those chords down, those are all you're gonna need in order to play along here. Just a tiny detail to throw in there as well that Michael, just before the chorus, you'll see him holding down his G sharp minor shape. And then he'll take off his little finger just to make it that minor seventh. So uh, if you just notice his little finger coming off, that's what's happening. As I always say, it's not gonna be an instructional video of how to play this song, but those are the chords that you're gonna need. And we do have a little bit of lead coming up as well. So let's have a quick listen to that and just watch it until the end of the performance.
Thank you once again, David Hoffner on keyboards. And there we have it. What a great performance in every single way, dynamically as well. Listen out for the way that the drums, when they kick in, the snare, you can hear that we're in the middle of that snare, but then we go back to that rim shot in the verses where we bring everything up just dynamically. You can watch this through. Like I said, there's loads to point out about this performance, but I do want to get into a little bit of the guitar that Michael's playing because there is a lot of technique in there that might fly under the radar. Let's just dive into it. So we've got this first phrase really melodic here and we've got this little, I don't think it's actually a sweep because there I went and I did a little uh, sweep across the strings with that right hand and you can do it that way if you want to. I believe that Michael is playing it and doing a little pull off to that open B. I'm just gonna have another quick listen to get the run that he puts in at the end. Okay, so we've got this. This kind of sounds like that. I'm not sure if he is going down to that first finger, but it's really subtly played here. So when we're going, you know, really understated with the lead. Let's continue it a bit further. Little slide up there. So we've got this. Kind of like that. Again, really subtle. Kind of like that. Okay, and now, that kind of sound again, not being too aggressive with it, with, yeah, and being over the top, really subtle, kind of like that. And there, just a little, little run down. And just to explain the shapes here, we're in, our major pentatonic shape, but we're taking the notes from the major scale as well. Kind of like that. The great thing is when you get used to picking out these notes, they're always going to be in the same place in your major pentatonic shape. So that... So you can start to jump to them and just throw them in as part of your pentatonic shape if you want to go into that major scale. So that... Really subtle. Let's continue. Delayed hammer-ons there. Really nice technique. And now we've got these pull-offs and he's kind of picking it once and just descending the whole time. You can do that with little finger, third finger. That's what Michael's doing here, or with third and second finger, depends what's most comfortable for you. For me, that's more comfortable for me with the third and the little finger, but it's pretty good to practice it both ways because it's always good to work on every single aspect of your technique where possible, but let's continue. Okay, little run down there again. So just working our way down that shape again, more into pentatonics there rather than pure major scale, but when we're going and then back into major scale.
Okay, really cool alternate picking here. So when we've slid up, actually, we're starting on that high E string. I'm gonna have to get my hand just out of the way, try and keep it organized, but we've got this. And then coming over to the B. And we might be coming over as far as the G. I just have another quick listen to that, make sure those notes are roughly in the right ballpark. Okay, so we've got this. Um, and so he does just throw up that uh, 17th fret to the 19th fret on the B string and then get over to the G at that point. And then we just have a little pick through that shape, which will be down, down, up, down, down, up with that right hand, like that. I also really like the dynamics that he's putting just within the alternate picking. So when we are here, it's not going really aggressive the whole time, it's and just coming in and then dropping back again, and then coming in again. So you, you hear it just almost getting closer to you and then further away dynamically, which just makes it so much more interesting to listen to. It gives it so much more personality and expression because it's not just all going, just all on one level. You get that. And it gets to the points where you almost can't hear it, but then it just comes back. I love the way that the piano now harmonizes with what Michael's doing on the guitar and here, all this happened is we've gone up an octave. So when we played our lines before, where we had this like that, and we had that little pull off to the open string earlier, whereas now we've got exactly the same thing, but we're gonna be an octave higher, which means just remember the dots that you're placing your fingers on. Little finger is on your third dot up. The guitar starts again here, so our third dot would be here. If you were just moving your hand up trying to play this second guitar that we get. I know I haven't got a marking here, but you'll have to trust me or just <laughs> count through that your second dot, two frets high, you get another dot. Second dot here, two frets high, you would have another dot there. So it means that we get same notes there. Kind of like that. And then we're into the outro. So it's that. It sounds like we get a little bit of alternate picking just to finish with from Michael, but so melodic from that lead perspective as well as just the whole song in general. But having the control and the ability on the right hand, there's alternate picking going on here, there's pull offs. You have to make sure that you keep that open B string when you're doing that, that little pull off there and just great navigation through his shapes. And just to point out that here, we've got gonna be in that major pentatonic, the extended shape, and we're in E here. So as we work our way up, we're taking again just notes from the major scale and pulling off, whereas you could bring that first finger over, like I said, but that's more of Rather than just playing through a scale, just finding the note that you want in a different place because the that pull off is going to give a totally different sound and it's going to ring out for longer potentially than going 
and just doing an upstroke and sweeping across the strings means that you get a nice clean sound and you can hear how the other strings when the first finger comes over you don't hear the other ones anymore whereas you might want to have and you can hear a little bit of that high E string still ringing out. As I said earlier, this is one of those videos that you could analyze for years because of the different sections and things just pop into your head, or at least they pop into my head all the time about having listened to a performance and then you just hear things in your head. For example, the way that when in the verses we have the picking, be another guitar that's just picking out the chords in exactly the same way with the chorus the into the really subtle kind of like that so you get the picking going on and it's such a great contrast between the rhythm. Another thing that I say all the time about if you've got two guitars generally one will either be playing different voicings of the chords and strumming or picking and picking different voicings of the chord as well. So you get one guitar that might be going and one guitar, I'll wait for it. Kind of like that. So you get, if you imagine like this stereo field that you've got headphones on, in one ear you can hear the picking going on and in the other ear you hear the acoustic guitar rhythm going on. So you get that contrast between the two. So it's not like you're hitting your ears with just a wall of sound. You've got different sounds coming from different guitars. Like I said, you could really <laughs> talk about this for years, or at least I could, all the different elements that go into this kind of live performance. But thank you guys for suggesting this video for me to take a look at. I did do a lot of research into Michael's history and when he started, his cowboy roots and all of that kind of stuff that I do in other videos. But because this has gone on for so long, I have run out of time, unfortunately. But it means that in the future, we'll probably be looking at Michael again with another performance. I mean, he's one of those guys that is such a fantastic singer, songwriter, writing songs for other artists as well, that there'll be plenty of other performances that we, we can look at, I'm sure, in the future where I can get into his background as well. But thank you guys for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Maybe another suggestion for a future video on Michael's where I can get into his background and his history as an artist as well. But if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think and I will catch you guys at the next one. Rock!